guys, what's up and welcome back to Hua Hin. Well, not really Hua Hin. We're driving out west to those mountains you see in the distance. I'm uh, joined by some friends, which I'll inst introduce in a moment when we get to uh, the petrol station. <laughs> so right here, we have a familiar face in Keith. And right here, we have an unfamiliar face. This is my friend Stephen from Peninsula Malaysia. Hold up, let me the video. Double Belgium shock. Oh, those go so stupid. These though. go stupid. They go so stupid. And here he is. Harry is Harry is back as well. <laughs> Stephen's, Stephen's just discovered. Uh, yeah, the po the point, point twenty five baht Sometime. coin. Jeez. And uh, they don't actually accept these in most shops, so you might as well. Bruh. Here we have God Ball Substantiata in his natural habitat. <laughs> <laughs> man let's get cruising <laughs> okay so first snake of the night is uh one we pretty much expected it's this adult female parius bird mori been a while since one of these has featured on the channel we've had a couple carinatus recently but not bird mori but uh we got more interesting things to find so we're just gonna let this one scoot on off the road and keep going okay second snake of the night is this trimerosaurus alba labris and actually that's the first one i've road cruised out here all year long Seen a few of them in the forest. Wait, there's a car. Seen a few of them in the forest, but uh, first one on this road. We used to get them out here on this road all the time, but recently, not commonly at all. But uh, yeah, just gonna leave this one be because we're gonna see a lot more of them when we get to the forest. Okay, so next snake of the night is this, another Albalabris, another female, this time a bit bigger. It's getting a bit close to my finger on this hook, so I'm gonna slowly lower it to the ground, but Again, not gonna spend long with this one, but nice to see. Oh, I've seen something. Okay, to be honest, road cruising was dreadful. So we've hopped out the car and we're gonna hit a trail. And it's, what's pretty funny is that I've been to this trail, like, I don't know, eight, nine, 10 times since moving here to Hua Hin, never once uploaded anything filmed here. That doesn't mean it's not good for filming. It's just the quality of filming and stuff just wasn't good those nights. And I didn't feel like it was good enough. So let's see if it makes it out tonight. Let's go see if we can find some cool snakes. Okay, so our first snake on the trail is an interesting one. And before I've even gone near it, it's coiled its tail up in defense. That's really interesting. It must sense me stomping around near it. It's flattened out its body and re raised its tail with that little orange point. Well, this is a uh, Cylindrophis jodier. This is Jody's pipe snake. And I don't know if I've actually ever shown one of these. Oh no, I have. Why do I keep... You know what, I've made a lot of videos this year, it's easy for me to miss things. I've shown this once before from Southern Thailand, but never from here in Hua Hin. And I actually have found this species once before in the Hua Hin area, uh, in this particular area, sorry. Uh, I'm talking nonsense. Well, anyway, I'm gonna pick it up, cool snake. Okay, so I picked this one up and I'm trying to avoid it biting me right now. Like, generally these are considered to not be a bitey species, but uh, come in and look at it. Really weird snake. <laughs> really weird snake with those tiny eyes. These cruise around in like swampy, watery habitats, usually under the mud. And uh, usually you don't expect to find them in forests like this, but this is the third time we've collectively found one in actual forest this year, which is really interesting along rocky streams, not typical like muddy, swampy areas. But uh, there's not too much to say about this guy and I'm hoping we can find some more tonight. So I'm gonna let this weird snake go. Take a close up of that head. Yeah, you see that? Really interesting burrowing little snake that's not too similar to anything else. It's in its own like unique family and probably most similar to a homolopsid, but even then the cylindrophidae are quite quite unique and it's got this little little orange tail tip and that very striking venter. Alright, let's let this one go. Okay, so it hasn't been the most productive walk today, but we just got this massive and really chunky Boiga cyanea, which is always a great addition. We've seen them before on this particular trail, in fact, many times. And we're thinking this one is the same individual we've seen before, because if you look at, it's got a lot of visible scale damage, particularly on the upper part, actually across the entire body from head to tail. Maybe the ones around here, there's several individuals which have such damage, but we've certainly encountered one of a similar size with that kind of damage on it before. But take a look at its mid body in my hand here. Really, really chunky individual. Usually the species is quite slender. And if you see it up here, Harry, go stand next to it. 
you can see this is a good like 1.5 meters at least i say so really nice big snake so what's interesting about this particular observation is you can see stevens here photographing this acanthosaura and it was actually on the ground right next to where we saw this one so we reckon this one was in the middle of some kind of predation event trying to track that acanthosaura down and these are known to love birds and their eggs but lizards are also a very much a favored food of this species and it was almost certainly trying to track it down after like spooking it out of the tree but uh yeah we saw the lizard after we saw the snake so unfortunately and we'd already disturbed the snake because we were basically standing on it when we found it but uh yeah nice to see boiga cyanir again especially a nice big one always a pleasant snake to encounter in the forest even if it is quite common as you heard me say, this cat snake seemed extremely familiar. So I went back to episode eight of my Thailand herping vlog series. And sure enough, Jakob and I found this exact same individual way back in March. The video is not clear, but you can make out the missing tail tip and scale damage in this image of the snake, which I took with Jakob. Not just that, but Harry had also found the same snake a month prior to this. It's not uncommon to see the same snake in more temperate environments with lower biodiversity and more habitat restrictions. But in a place like Thailand with an expansive forest and high diversity of species, it is remarkable that we found this same individual multiple times. Moreover, it highlights that catching and handling a snake does not mean it moves to a new area or dies. Disturbance from other animals is a natural part of the life of a snake. And despite all the damage from previous aggressors, this one is clearly still very healthy just got done in the forest and of course there's going to be some snakes on the road finally now because it's been raining and the most predictable of all of them of course is Hypsoscopus plumbia. We actually saw one of these at the stream but it like disappeared under some vegetation and this one's being defensive. Stephen can you put your finger in front of its face please? <laughs> Alright back at 7-Eleven in Hua Hin. It's the end of the night, far from the most productive herp I've ever done by any means, but hell, I figured I'd stick it on the channel and hope you enjoy the video. There's some bosses here in the background. I don't know if we'll get to film anything else before we go, but... I use my uh, 0.25 cents. Uh, 0.25 baht. Seriously? Yes. It's useful, man. Holy shit.